Welcome. This video is going to be an installation overview of this Hellwig Products heavy duty rear stabilizer bar for 94 to 02 Dodge Ram, 1500 to 3500s. And we're also going to try and find out the comparison we'll do before and after and see how much it actually does reduce my body roll. So here's the deal I got my 96 Dodge Ram 2500, and I recently picked up this Lance 835 truck bed camper weighs around 2,040 pounds empty. Now, when you put it in this truck, it's probably a little bit more than its rated payload, and this does have factory suspension, uh, so that's a whole nother story, but I have a lot of body roll. After reading through some forums, it seems that these heavy-duty rear sway bars will help reduce it dramatically. So as far as the kit goes, these do come with a pretty hefty price tag of around $360. I got mine on eBay for $337, but uh, they, it is made in USA, so that's pretty awesome. I think from what I, I heard, they actually have their own foundry and everything too. So this is like, this is high tensile steel, good stuff, way better than the factory. And this bar measures about an inch and an eighth wide and let's look at my factory bar here real quick that's what she looks like and the factory bar measures one inch so not too much heavier duty but i was talking to one of their tech guys and he said that these factory bars are just flimsy steel and i'm gonna notice such a big difference so i'm excited to get this thing on here of course it comes with some instructions and pictures but i think the installation is going to be pretty straightforward that's what the rest of it looks like let's get this thing on here i think the way we'll do this uh let's put the camper on first and then get some measurements of how much this thing actually rocks back and forth with me standing on top of it and then we'll put the new sway bar on and see what we got Now, before we take our measurements, let me make a quick note. I am waiting for my frame mounts for these fast guns to mount to. So currently I have these pipes jammed in the hitch, very rigid back there. That's actually completely fine. And then up front, a lot of guys would frown on this, but this is tied to my uh, step bars, but these are super rigid and frame mounted step bars and they don't have any flex at all. I don't think it makes a difference. It's not like it's lifting off the bed or anything when I rock. So let's see what it looks like. This is our setup, very high tech stuff. Have my cell phone camera mounted here. We have this zeroed out at four inches on the tape measure and I'm gonna get up there and bounce this and see what we got. Here we go. Plant my feet right here and here and I'm gonna give it all I got. And here we go. That looks like six and a half to one and a half. So what's that? Uh, it's like five inches total then. Not too bad. Well, actually, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Installation begins by removing the old sway bar. So you got uh, two 15 millimeters holding the bushing bracket on. Uh, this is 19 millimeter nut on the top and 18 millimeter bolt on the other side of it. And then, uh, yeah, pop all that stuff off. And you also got to get these brackets off too. Now, if you don't already have uh, these brackets, these top mounts, you will have to drill holes in your frame. Not going into that in this video though, because it looks like, of course, I've already got those. Side by side, they look very similar. Let's hear the difference. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Let's try to bend it. Oh, very, very stiff. How about this one? Well, this has got a bushings on it, so it's gonna dampen it down, but bending it, oh yeah, much, 
much more push to it. I'll say these instructions aren't the best. They're decent. But my first question is, does the bar go in like this or like this? And it seems to maybe make a difference. I'm going to say it goes like this because that's just what I think. So hopefully I'm right. All right, guys, next day here. I'm not exactly sure where I left off yesterday, but I got a little bit frustrated because I was thinking this was a Dane 80, but then after looking it up, it might have been a Dana 70. We're going to go back into that in a second, but here's what the final installation looks like, and I'll give you a quick run through on that. Now, this is the orientation I put the bar in, and I actually did flip it and put it the other way too, just to make sure. And of course, the back was hanging down real low. So that seems to be the proper orientation right there. Now, if you go under my hood, it does say Dana 80 is my rear axle. So according to that, I was supposed to use this larger plate, which they, they call a three hole in the instructions, but it's really a four hole. However, none of these holes lined up with the U bracket for the uh, rear bushings on this. So let me show you the other picture of it here. And uh, boom, they're showing measurements. I'm like, this doesn't even line up with what they're talking about on here. Uh, so that's, I'm gonna have to call them about that. <laughs> I ended up using the spacer that they recommend for all the other axles and that worked just fine. Now it's interesting because the factory sway bar bolted up here and same on the driver's side it bolted on the front holes and I'm not sure why they moved it back on this one. I, I don't really get it but I'll assume they know what they're doing. And so on the passenger side you have that standard two hole short spacer. But in a nutshell the way you install this is the grease that's supplied with the kit you apply that onto this bushing. I put it on the outside of the bushing as well just to prevent any rust and corrosion. So get those lubed up and put these brackets on with the bolts supplied using washers on both sides. I actually didn't use washers on the bottom because you, you can't even get a washer on there if you wanted to. And uh, that's all fine and dandy. And then to bolt this U bracket on, you got the half inch bolt, washer on the bottom. Uh, you then grease up the bushings for these links, hammer those into place and grease up the steel collar that goes inside of those, put those in, and then you can install these short links. Now, I will say this top uh, this top bracket up here, this was a real pain to get on. There's actually, so you got the two bolts and washers holding it on, and then on the top, there's another spacer plate that goes in. Of course, the instructions sh show all that, but getting in between this gas tank to get those nuts on there, it was a real pain in the butt. Uh, so I would recommend maybe take your spare tire down and go from behind to get those. I squeezed in between here, but it was tough. Now, you can see when I tighten these down, these are lock nuts. I probably over tighten that just a little bit and it squeezed down and bent. But if I left it loose, I felt like it was going to be causing some clunking. So that's not nice to see on such an expensive kit. The top one seemed to line up a little bit better. And same thing on the other side. Uh, but that was the installation and let's, I mean, that's an overview of it. I'm gonna, not going to lie, it was kind of a pain in the butt to get all on, only because I was just so unsure about uh, what they wanted. A quick note here, they do recommend you leave the weight of the vehicle on the wheels, don't have it jacked up. You know, or if you do jack it up, it's got to be jacked up by the axle. And when you're aligning these, you have to have at least one hole open. So they basically have to overlap three holes total on these links. I hope I'm explaining that right. And this adjustment, I guess this is for like if you have a lifted truck or not, but uh, they want the sway bar pretty much level and flat, which is just about where I have mine now. I'm sure you guys can see also, it looks like I should replace my parking brake cables pretty soon. Only other thing I'll tell you is all of these bolts, I applied tons of grease like on the inside of here too, only because I know the way these, these steel components can be and they get all rusty and crudded up, especially aftermarket paint a lot of time. We'll see if this... Hellwig paints any better, but a lot of time this aftermarket paint peels and gets super rusty. And now for the moment you've been waiting for it, let's see if this actually made a difference or not. My first thought pushing this is, I don't think it made a difference at all, but let's see. Here goes nothing. Let's see how much we can get it rocking. And my first thought is that looks about the same, like two inch to six and a half. Now, I'll be honest, it's a little disappointing to see the lack of difference between the two tests, but this doesn't necessarily mean that going down the road, I'm not going to notice a difference, so I guess we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, I think I definitely need to upgrade the leaf packs or add uh, air, air springs on this for sure, but 
for anybody that's not sure about uh, what a torsion bar does, it basically, I'm gonna actually go jump on a truck right now, but as these ends flex back and forth, uh, when one's going down and one's going up, it's applying a twisting motion on that bar. And so that's like a, it's basically a torsion bar, torsion spring. Another thing I'd like to mention here is over the factory sway bar setup, there is a slight disadvantage because of all these mechanical connections and these bolts might get worn out and loose over time causing noise. And I think that's pretty much gonna wrap this video up on the Hellwig sway bar. My opinion is if you're looking for that magic sway bar answer, no, I don't think they made this thing beefy and heavy duty enough for these trucks. Of course, they do have this big camper that's probably heavier than what this truck should be hauling, but now, if you're interested to see the future improvements I do, I just ordered some Rancho RS9000 shocks for the front and rear, and I'm gonna be adding those air springs more than likely. Uh, and I'll also do a comparison video on that one. So if you're interested for that, check out down below. I'll post it in the description when it's available, or maybe I'll plug it in up here. Well, I gotta say, I just got off the highway. We threw about 30 miles on the highway or so, and I think I, I definitely noticed a difference with the sway bar. To me, it, it did feel like it slowed down the sway. It still sways more, but I feel like it slows down quicker. So for what that's worth, I mean, I, it could be just in my head, but you saw with those measurements, it didn't make a huge difference, but I definitely feel like it made a substantial difference in the way this truck's driving so far. So I'm glad I put it on and I'm excited to get the uh, shocks on there too. We'll see what difference that makes. I'll see you next time. KZ Guy 2, no nonsense, no how. March it to the table, see the same old thing. Ain't no food up on the table, ain't no pork up in the pan. But you better not complain, boy. You'll be in trouble with the man. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight. Well, geez, tell me that wasn't hilarious that a plane flew over right in time to drown out my terrible voice. Uh, for anybody still watching, I got a quick update here if you're putting one of these Hellwig kits in. All right, so I got a call back from tech support over at Hellwig, and I'm asking them, like, what, what's the deal with these brackets? Why am I adding these? Why am I pushing the sway bar back further than it is from the factory? And he said, basically, whatever you got to do to get this bar to sit parallel, uh, I guess with this kit fits a lot of different trucks, and they had problems with these lower shock mounts. Uh, that's why they include the adapters. But on mine, I realized, I'm like, I can put this right all the way forward in the factory location, and that actually brings the stabilizer links sitting more vertically, and they look better. So that's exactly what I did. I got rid of those spacers completely, and now this bar looks so much better. We're sticking off the back. I'm like, this looks stupid. So, yeah, you don't need these brackets. And this is for you guys at Hellwig. Uh, these two brackets, the holes lined up fine for, for the U-clamps, for these, these clamps, and, you know, I was able to use them. But this other one, I don't know if you want to go check your machining, because this one did not line up at all. You can see that those holes are way off, and even if I flip the bracket the other way, uh, none of the holes line up. So this four-hole bracket is basically useless. Uh, you might, might want to look back in your kits and check that out. I don't know if you have a... Uh, machine issue going on or whatever the case I'm just sitting here putting these ranchos in check out that's pretty pretty gnarly shot compared to the the factory ones a lot stiffer and they're adjustable too these are the rancho 9000s but uh yeah so i went ahead and moved my bar forward and it looks a lot better now i just can't believe i wasted that much time messing with these brackets i was assuming that the kit was engineered to where maybe 
the bar had to be pushed back for it to work properly and get it more rigid but not using these plates also pushes the bar up a little bit higher since these are like 3 8 steel and of course you want that bar up away from the ground as high as you can so yeah that's the update all right good luck on your install hopefully it goes smoother than mine